Hi, I'm Charles Cox, founder of Forge and Sea and the designer of Habitat. It's a game about building space stations out of space junk. It'll be releasing this holiday for PC, Mac, Linux, and Xbox One. I wanted to give you a tour of our GDC demo build, show you some of the features, and let you see a little bit of what the game plays like. We're going to be using mouse and keyboard to run this demo, but it works equally well with a controller. All right, let's get started. All right. Now, as I said, Habitat is a game about building space stations out of space junk. In this demo, we'll start you off with a pre-made city. You can see it here. It's got some Connex containers, some space spheres, a gas tank, and a couple of rockets to help you move around, and we'll get to those later. Now, floating around your habitat are your engineers. These are your workers. You can give them different tasks to help you build your habitat. They can grab junk, they can bring it in, they can upgrade it, you can repair your station if it gets broken, and so on. Now, on your right, you're going to see your status bars, your oxygen, food, and electricity levels inside your habitat. Now, the citizens have no die mode on and we're not tracking food, but oxygen and electricity are being tracked. For now, know that your goal in general is to expand and get more room for your citizens to save them from the horrors of Earth, so let's get started doing that. All right, let's search around for some junk. Now we can use WAS and D, or the arrow keys and the keyboard, or the edge scrolling, or the middle mouse button to look around, and our scroll wheel will zoom in or out so we can see more of the map. Now you can hover your cursor over anything that looks interesting to you and get some information about it. Here we see these are some shipping containers, over here is a space capsule, there's an asteroid fragment, and a grappling hook launcher. Oh, nice. Now if there's junk that you want to add to your habitat, you can just left click on it and you'll get a preview. And you can move this preview around to wherever you want the engineers to take it. Now if you line up the blue dots on that preview with blue dots on your habitat, that green outline signifies your engineers are going to weld that piece onto your habitat, onto your city, and make it bigger. By left clicking, you can confirm that. There goes the engineer. He's going to go grab it. And when he does, he's going to stabilize it onto the game's XZ plane and begin to drag it back. Here he comes. Once he gets here, he's going to weld the piece on. You'll see a progress bar show up. There he goes. See, it automatically creates that connection between the two points, and there we are. It's part of your habitat. You'll see the oxygen and electricity levels are stabilizing as node by node the system is updating itself. And now we have a new piece of our city. Perfect. Now that was just one engineer and one junk piece. We've got a whole bunch of engineers who can multitask for us, so let's line a whole bunch up. Let's see, we'll grab this container and weld it there, and then we'll get this booster rocket, and we'll stick it on there, and the uh, space capsule, I want that on the right-hand side there, and I want to grab, maybe grab this asteroid. Now, it's only got one weld point, I'm going to rotate it, so you use the period and the comma keys to rotate, and I've decided, uh, actually, I really don't want this, I'll right-click and cancel that. Perfect. Now the game will automatically pick the next available engineer to do the work, or you can manually select an engineer by pressing the N key. You can see them all coming back and stabilizing the junk, and I haven't had to do anything. Let me grab this rocket. I want one additional rocket. And since I picked that engineer that was close by, it's a nice, efficient way to get the work done. Here they come. And suddenly the city's even bigger. Now, it's fun to build up this single habitat, but what if I wanted multiple habitats, my own individual cities? Maybe I just want to make small outposts or special purpose vehicles. Well, you use the same setup by left clicking, but you'll notice if you move it around, it stays blue. Instead of welding it to something else, move it to an empty space when it's blue and left click. Your engineer is going to go and grab it like they would if they were going to weld it to something. They're still going to have to stabilize it just like they're doing now. But once they do stabilize it, they're going to just move it to that spot that you designated instead of welding it on. And if you click on another piece of junk, like say this booster rocket, and bring it over, you'll notice it turns green, meaning the engineer can weld that booster rocket right on to this spherical capsule that's now going to turn into a brand new habitat. So there they go. 
looking good. Anytime you weld one piece to another piece, you've created a brand new habitat. And you can manage it and add producers to it and fly it around and do all the things you would do with your big city. Perfect. All right, here they come and they're welding it together. Now, I like setting up a bunch of objects uh, in the same location using that blue movement mode, kind of bringing them all together. And then once they get there, I'll do all my welding. I call that scrap yarding. I don't know what the technical term is, but that's what I call it. Okay, looking good. Brand new city. All right, we're back with the original starter habitat since we can more easily show this next part. Now, we've learned how to put a lot of pieces together, and I talked a bit about how oxygen and electricity flow through them. But what do you do with them once they're attached? Well, a habitat is a living organism. Each piece has certain vital functions that it can perform, but you get to choose what they are. Let's jump in and take a look. Hover over the habitat so the entire thing lights up, and then left-click on it. Now, you've entered habitat management mode. Two things I want you to notice. First, the little message box at the bottom of the screen now has a different mode displayed. The modes are a little bit like web browser history. You can always back out. In habitat, you do that by right-clicking or hitting escape. That always goes back or cancels. Second, you now see some menu items appear over the habitat. You're going to see a lot of these menus. They're the primary way we do context-sensitive things in the game. For now, you can see some basic options. We'll talk about the top two later, but for now, let's talk about the Select Node button. Notice how, in this mode, you can hover over the individual nodes and click on them. Again, to back up, you can right-click if you need to. Let's get back into Select Node mode. There we go. Let's try clicking on the gas tank here at the bottom left. We see another menu, Jettison or Build. Let's choose Build and Build an Electric Generator. Left-click on that. And your engineer is going to reel himself in, going to jump over there to the gas tank and start building an electrical system from the gas tank itself. When he gets done, you'll notice the electricity in the habitat is starting to increase. Perfect. Now, certain junk pieces have certain properties. These gas tanks are great for electricity or oxygen generation, but you can't live in them or grow food in them. So you'll need to search out the right junk for the task you're trying to perform and keep your stats in balance as you get bigger. Just a note for you builders out there. If you end up making a weld you don't like, you can just go into node management mode, click on the node you don't want, and click jettison. There it goes. You can grab it, and you can weld it on somewhere else. As we go on with development, you'll be able to split whole habitats in half, crack off sub-habitats that you can deploy to do different tasks, and weld whole individual habitats together into mega floating cities in a similar way, but for now it's just node by node. Now you've got floating cities up in orbit, but did you know they're also flying cities? You've already got some rockets strapped on by default, so you can take your habitat for a spin right now. Let's try it. Left-click on your habitat, and then select Fly Habitat. Now the interface changes a little bit, so let's get familiar with it. At the top is your throttle setting. You press plus to increase it and minus to decrease it. You notice it doesn't do anything right now. Well, that's because we haven't activated any of our rockets. In the middle of the screen, you're going to see a few numbers. These numbers indicate the rockets that you have in your habitat. You can either click on the number or press the corresponding number key to activate or deactivate the rocket. It turns green, meaning it receives power from the throttle. All of your activated rockets receive power from whatever your throttle setting is. So why don't we go ahead and take it for a spin. Let's turn on rocket number two and throttle up a bit. There we go, we're underway. Now we'll throttle down, and you notice we keep going. There's no air friction up here, so you have to get used to drifting a little bit. Now let's try uh, turning on the second engine and rolling them both together. Throttle up. Whoa, we're getting out of control. We'll have to click the emergency stop button. There we go. Now that's venting oxygen to stop us, which is good to stop, of course, but we're putting our citizens at risk. Not only are we reducing the oxygen they have, but if we happen to lose more oxygen through leaks or other damage, we not, may not have enough to stop. If we want more control or power over our flight, we can just attach more rockets. 
Stick this booster rocket here on the side. That'll give us some lateral thrust in the other direction. Now, it isn't a question of go left or go right. The only control surfaces we have up in space are the thrusters that we attach. So you'll have to think about the geometry of your thrust configuration and add rockets where you need to to give yourself control. There's an art to it for sure, but there's nothing like the feeling of steering whole cities in orbit. Turn them all on and let's go for a ride. Oh yeah, vanilla coke. Starting to get out of control, better hit that emergency stop again. Woo. In this demo, we have something to challenge you a bit. Off to the right of your habitat is this derelict. Kind of looks like the Reavers got it. The derelict is not selectable by you as the player, but you can interact with it. And by interact with it, I mean crack it apart and steal the pieces. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, that's up to you, but it's probably going to involve physics somehow. Heavy things, explosions, maybe a grappling hook or a particle accelerator. As we develop the game, we'll be moving forward with enemy habitats that have their own engineers with their own agendas. They'll fight for their own resources, and you'll be able to have city-to-city -city combat, including boarding and takeovers. For now, this is just a dummy city you can crack apart. If you are able to blast pieces off it, you can grab those pieces and attach them to your own habitats as salvage. Let me show you a few weapons and tricks that can help you get there. First, every rocket can be a weapon. Click on your habitat, click Select Node, and then click on one of your booster rockets. You click Detach and Fire. This will turn your rocket into a deadly weapon, but be careful. It's just as dangerous to you as it is to any other enemies. Kapla. Second, there's a grappling hook that you can use, several in fact that are scattered around. Fire it like you would detach and fire rockets. Click it, select fire weapon, and it'll fire a harpoon. If you're able to hit a target with it, you'll see a line attach between the target and your habitat. Click stop firing weapon to detach the hook. Third, there's a particle accelerator nearby that deals massive damage. Attach it onto your habitat wherever you'd like. Be aware which end is the business end. And you'll activate it the same way you'll activate the detach and fire rocket or the grappling hook. Note this consumes quite a bit of power, though, so you'll probably have to power up your habitat a bit before you use it. Select node, fire weapon. Notice it's a constant beam weapon. Anything it touches, it exerts a push force on, and you can keep it on even while you're flying around. In fact, we encourage it. Excellent. And fourth, if you're just dying to know what fire and forget is, it's a way to turn your entire habitat into a weapon. Click fire and forget, and all of your rockets will activate and turn your habitat into, usually, a spinning death flower. So, with this set of tools at your disposal, the question is, what are you going to do now, Commander? As I put together my custom orbital wrecking ball, I like to call the Ripper, I have some parting thoughts. We're building this universe with you in mind. We want players to be able to create the kind of habitats they dream of. Beautiful, crazy, deadly, all are possible in habitat. And that's the kind of game that we're going to be building for you. If you like what you've seen here and want to play habitat for yourself, we've got a couple of ways to make that happen. First, we're going to be showing off habitat at a number of gaming events this year. Please stay tuned to jointhe509th.com or our Kickstarter to learn when we're going to be in your neighborhood. Second, we're planning a comprehensive alpha and beta pre-release program. Check out our Kickstarter to grab a reward tier that gets you alpha and beta access. We wanted to also say thanks for riding along with us on this first playthrough of the Habitat GDC demo. From all of us here at Forgency, we hope you had fun, and we hope to see you soon. Gotcha. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. <laughs> I couldn't resist saying that.